Um, yeah. Let's move on to our next topic. Uh, the NFL apologized for uh, for not allowing silent protests. For all the things that have happened in the past, let me read Roger Goodell's statement really quick. Uh, this came out Friday after we had our show where we were questioning whether or not we were actually going to see any change, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, and then it happened right after we got done. So we had to bring it up today. His statement is, we, the National Football League, condemn racism and the systematic oppression of black people, Goodell said. We, the National Football League, admit we were wrong for not listening to NFL players earlier and encouraging all to speak out and peacefully protest. Uh, we, the National Football League, believe Black Lives Matter. I personally protest with you and want to be part of the much-needed change in this country. Without black players, there would be no National Football League, and the protests around the country are emblematic of the centuries of silence, inequality, and oppression of black players, coaches, fans, and staff. Uh, it says, this is a Yahoo article, it said, the stance is a stark contrast to the NFL's response to player protests addressing police, yeah, excuse me, police brutality and systematic oppression I can't talk today. Excuse me. Uh, You're good. Colin Kaepernick set the tone for the protest that involved kneeling during the national anthem. He hasn't played since 2016 as political pressure by President Donald Trump condemned the protest, shifting the subject from black oppression and police brutality to a false narrative concerning the military and patriotism. Um, basically, Goodell said exactly what they the asked him to say. Him to what say. they said they wanted to hear from him. Yeah. So and he came I, out I, I would say, so you know me. And you know my great disdain for this individual. Yes. Okay. I, I, I've got to give him credit when he's owed credit. Is it too late? Sure. Okay. But you know my policy on that. I, I can't look back. Yeah. So long as you this, get him to the party, then this then, fight okay. is this fight is too hard. There are too many hurdles in front of us to to be worried about looking back. Are you you're on board now? You're with us. You gave in and for what we asked. Thank you. Welcome to the party. Now, you what's the are next a step? Big swinging dick at this party. You can bring thirty-two other billionaires along with your billionaire self, and you can have great voice that some of us, even great star players, can't have. Yeah. Because of the financials that you can bring behind you, and 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 your voice and what you represent with being the shield is always bigger than the individual player and the name on the back. And and I think this is a big move forward, and and whether he was coerced, whether he was backed into a corner, rather whatever, he's at the party and he's on our side. So let's go forward. The the thing that there's one other part that I want to address. Several other people are coming out now. I don't know if these are other players or media members. I saw a couple of media members saying that that's not enough. We want. Kaepernick back in the league. We won't forgive you it's until you specifically actually name Kaepernick by name. And all yeah. this stuff. So my problem is this. The players, the black players, and, and this isn't every black player, so I can't say they speak for all of them, but these individuals, these men, made the, a list of demands. He heard them. He found them to be reasonable. He found them to be right. And he gave them what they wanted, and he's now on side with them. To now have a bunch of other rando people out in the world say that's not enough, and we also demand this, 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 and this, I strongly disagree with. And I think if you want to have conversations about those things, that's fine. I think those conversations are important. But to then take someone who gave in to all of these players' demands and then say, all right, now we want more. That hurts the argument. It puts him back into a corner. It's going to make the NFL more defensive about ever giving in to any demands. This is why we have policies on never give in demands to, to ransom and terrorists and all this other stuff. Because once you start, it's really hard to stop seeing the other side as constantly demanding things. Yeah. I appreciate the players that were involved in this. Kind of took it and was like, hey, all right. I know Tyrone Matthews shared out, hey, you're, we're good. Thank you. You know, and, 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 and it, I think it's a good thing, not a bad thing. And I also think there's only one owner, one owner that worries me with their stance on this whole thing. And that's Mr. Jerry Jones. I had, a I think all 31 that. owners are going, they all, I think a conversation was had and all 31 owners agree. We're going forward. Jerry is the only owner that outright said, if you kneel, you won't play. And all I can hope 
is that one Mr. Stephen Jones is now so in charge of that team that he can properly tell daddy, we have to move on. And if you say anything, I'm going to take this team from you. Yeah, I can believe that. Uh, let's dive into the chat here. Ben asked, Cap is back. Uh, I don't believe that that's what this means. Um, I don't know that that's what, but I don't know that that's off the table either. I don't think it's Alden off the table. Smith just got a job, and he hadn't been in the league for three years either, okay? Agreed, agreed. Now, uh, he's not playing quarterback, but it, at the same time, we just brought Alden Smith back. Yeah. Why can't we bring Cap back? And, and Cap has to realize his worth. Yes, he and that's the biggest part of this. Because can't it, demand starting money. He yeah. just can't. And he hadn't played in three years. It's it, so it's got to be somewhere in between because Kaepernick is a sideshow. He may be a good player, he may be a fantastic backup, but he he's got the Tim Tebow problem. And right? he might be a starter. He might but be. He's got to get into an organization yeah. and earn his stripes. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Michael said Mike Glennon got thrown under the bus. Yeah, there was a player that came out and said like, "You can't tell me that Cap isn't one of the best, you know, sixty four quarterbacks in this league." Like my team just signed Mike Glennon. Like, but we hang on. We've never argued that he wasn't one of the sixty-four. He's had opportunities. I will assure yes. you that he had contract offers for backup roles, and he didn't want it. He because of the money the backups make, they yeah. make three to six million dollars. Now some of the backups make twelve, fourteen million dollars. It just depends on he, the situation. Yes, he. I don't, and they never release terms of contracts, and they say no offer was officially made, and 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 I believe that that's just negotiation, or whatever. That's fine, but uh, he's if he really wants in the league, and you can't hold the NFL responsible for that. If he doesn't take a contract, and they're offering him a reasonable contract, which if I was the NFL, I would make all those contract offers public. Yeah, but look, look, we offered him seven million dollars a year. For one year, it's a one-year prove-it deal. I think that's I think that's understandable and reasonable. Yeah, and if you come in and you earn the starting job, make it like make it like Andy Dalton's contract. If you earn the starting job, you get a four million dollar boost because now you're a starter. Yeah, I I, I fully understand and make that reasonable. Yeah, Michael said, if you start giving into demands, where does it end? The Brown Yeti jumped on that and said, give an inch and someone will try and take a mile. Uh, then Michael came back and said, uh, uh, with as much time as they have before the season starts, does the NFL go away with having players on the field for the national anthem? Uh, no, I think they're going to let them gonna out. Let them I think they're going to publicize it. I think they're going to advertise it. And I think they're going to say, if you want to walk from the NFL for this, we're okay letting you walk. Because even when you walked last time, which I don't think the walk will be nearly as big as it was last time. Not after quarantine. At, at some point in time, yeah, all these people are going to say, look, I don't really care. I get it, but I want football. Now, and they're all going to come back to the TV. What I could see is this is what they did uh, the second year of the protests. Was they, they didn't televise it. Yeah, they didn't televise it. So Jason Lockenford talked today on Tony Kornheiser's podcast today about last year there were still like three players that continued to kneel all last year. I had no idea. I didn't know because they didn't televise the national anthem. And I'm actually okay with that. If yeah. you're the NFL and you want to continue that route, that's okay. Here's the thing. The national anthem well, wasn't even a thing for like a long time. I Like outside of the Olympics, I never understood like why we play the national and we don't play the national anthem at the Olympics until after somebody's won a medal. Yeah. So like before a sporting event, this tradition got started. And now we feel like if you don't play the national anthem before, but, why? There's nothing patriotic about a baseball game outside of it was America's pastime, you know, Same or thing a with soccer the NFL match or the NBA or yeah, whatever. Like, like let's, the deal you know, is, these, these are just dudes playing sports. We've talked about this before. The reason that it, it gets played for anybody that doesn't know is the U S military paid Pays all of these organizations to do it. Like, that's and they why pay it for it. They pay yeah. the NFL. They pay Major League Baseball to play the national anthem. They pay the NBA. Our tax dollars go to pay for those big ass flags that they throw out there, and all these. So, and it's it's millions of dollars a year. Yeah, Michael said if they don't have fans in the stands, what's the point of the national anthem? If if that happens, right? So, I mean. Chris I'm still, gonna, I'm still yeah. siding on now. The COVID numbers aren't in my favor right now, but I'm still betting. I'm taking all over bets. I'm just getting better odds on it. There you go. There you go. Um, so we'll we'll jump off of that. We we've spent enough time 
yeah. on that one. Let's uh, 